and welcome to another episode of Digging History. This is our 24th episode. That's right, folks. Two years of digging and having a great time. All of those great memories, you know what I mean, from Digging History. Go and check out all of the shows that we've put out so far. Some great finds that we've, we've managed to uh, uh, find over the last two years and some wonderful stories and some histories that have been associated with individuals from West Virginia. Of course, we've added Bravo, the service dog, and he's laying here at my feet right now. And we're gonna actually talk about some of the things that you need to take to the field with you when you go metal detecting. Hey, look, it's getting hot right now, folks, and I'm not kidding you. It's hard to get up and get in those woods now. You've got briars, you've got weeds, you've got ticks, you got lots of snakes that are out there and the wildlife is there. And then on top of that, you got to deal with your machine that isn't always real friendly whenever you bounce it against some blades of grass or some sticks that are laying on the ground. You notice it'll give you those, those little tones, those fake tones. And then how about those times when you're out there looking and it's like, I know there's something really cool here and you dig and you dig and you never find nothing because it gave you some sort of a ghost signal because you were bouncing it across brush. So this is whenever you really start to look at a couple of things. Number one, your search coil. I like to put a smaller search coil on my metal detectors whenever I'm out in the woods and it is thick brush. Why? Because you don't have as much uh, restriction. Now, it does reduce your ability sometimes to find some of those uh, really cool artifacts because you know you do lose a little bit of depth uh, with that um, but in some cases it actually helps you to zero in on those smaller areas that you normally couldn't get to and you know I found some cool things I found some uh, lots of coins and bullets and buckles and belts and uh, 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 you know belt keepers and you name it buttons everything that you can imagine folks we've been able to find while we're out there digging. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about what are some of the things that you need to take with you when you go out into the woods. You know, we've talked about the significance of safety. We've talked about the importance of, of, of having, you know, spare batteries, letting people know where you're at, you know, ensuring you have permission on the site that you're located at. But how about what do you pack with you when you go out in the woods. Now, I carry a backpack with me, and, and I can tell you that uh, there's a lot of stuff in that backpack. It's a little bit heavy at times, but in, in the summer months and you know the spring and the summer months especially, you're gonna need to pack things like extra water. Now, I carry this large thing of water, and I fill it up, and it has a little bowl that goes on the bottom, and this is Bravo's water. Now, um, you know, Bravo, you know, obviously tries to find streams and things to, to drink out of, but I like to make sure that he's got good, clean water, just like I have good, clean water. So I carry this with me. In addition, Bravo's got to eat too, you know, and so he gets hungry, and like right now, he's looking up at me. He wants a snack, so I'm going to give him a, a few little pieces of food there, and he will just gobble that right up. Now... I like to give him a good quality food. I'm not gonna tell you what brand to buy, but I like salmon and pumpkin for my German Shepherd. And why is that? Because it's really good for their joints. You know, German Shepherds are known to have issues. He wants another, he wants another treat. He's setting up there being good. You know, he wants, uh, uh, he wants to be able to move around. And then you've gotta have the protein levels. And obviously you see that he loves this stuff. And, and I use it also for his, his training. And let me just kind of show you how that goes as well. So he knows, bravo, sit, go on, go on. Sit, good boy, good boy, what a good boy. See, you get him to sit and then I can get him to lay down. Okay, plots, good boy, bravo. What a good boy you are. And he's hungry and so you give him a little something to eat and you keep him um, also hydrated. Now, 
It's not just Bravo that needs the hydration and the food. It's also you, the individual. So the average, what they tell you, the daily uh, intake of water, I, 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 you got to get you some food in a minute. I'll get it for you in just a minute. Um, the average intake of water, what you should be taking in, is eight, eight ounce glasses of water. Now, here's 16 ounces. So if I'm going out into the woods and I need to, um, and I'm going to be out there for eight or 10 hours, I can tell you I need to have at least six of those. Six of those um, that is going to, uh, you know, get me through that day. Same thing with Bravo. You know, this has to be totally full. And you watch, even if I don't have the bottom part, watch, he will drink right out of this cap. And it's a huge cap. And it's enough to kind of give him enough to wet his whistle and to make sure that he doesn't get dehydrated. So this is all very important. Water. The other thing that I like to carry with me, and I tell people about this, is, is a snack. And I'm going to turn it over this way because I don't want you to see what kind it is. And he wants some of it too. But it's a high-protein, low-carb snack that gives me the oomph that I need to get out into the woods and move around. So if I'm out there halfway through my day and I need a little boost of protein, this is where I'm going to get it. You don't get any of that, Bravo. <laughs> so as you can see, we have to be prepared. So if you're going to go out in the woods and go metal detecting, especially in the deep woods, you want to make sure that you have things prepared. The other thing I like to take with me, and I know it looks goofy, folks, but this wide-brimmed hat, okay? Now, why would we want a wide-brimmed hat, okay? We would want a wide-brimmed hat because as goofy as it may look, folks, it keeps the sun off of me, keeps it off of my neck, and it also prevents those bugs like the ticks from dropping down on top of my head and getting into my hair. So you definitely want to um, have something to cover up your head. And Bravo has now got into a feeding frenzy, and that's where he's at with that. So he's a little bit hungry right now. But he's a really good dog. And if you work with your service animal or you work with your pet, there's no reason why you can't take them out in the woods to enjoy this with you. Now, I have Bravo do certain things out there. Okay, he knows that whenever dad goes to move a big stick or a limb or something, Bravo will uh, reach down and he'll grab it and he'll pull and help me pull the brush and the, and the sticks out of the way. And, and so he becomes a partner in this effort as well. And, and there's no reason why you can't take your animal with you when you, you head out. Um, and I'm going to give him a cut. Plots. All right, and I'm going to give him a few more treats here, and then we're going to go to show you some of these great, great adventures in the woods with Bravo and I. Right, old buddy? Do you want a treat? Have you been a good boy? There you go. All right, folks, we'll be right back with Digging History. Enjoy the footage from the field while I feed Bravo. We'll be right back. All right, folks. That's right. Bravo and I are out here um, trying to find a, uh, a rest area where Morgan's Raiders took a rest at. Now, it could be here or it could not be here. I don't know. But we're going to come up in here in this area and we're going to search around a little bit. He's over there digging at sticks. That's what he does. Um, and maybe we'll find something. Who knows? Um, I know there was an artist sketch that shows this location. So we know they were here, but did they spend the night? Did they camp out? Did they drop anything? We're about ready to find out. So Morgan's Raiders, you know, the longest raid of the Civil War occurred up through Ohio into West Virginia, you know, Indiana. I mean, there was just so much activity uh, that occurred during Morgan's Raid in 1863. A lot of it on uh, just across the border from West Virginia over in Meigs County, Ohio. So, it's hard to tell if we'll find anything at all. 
But if we do, we do. We'll come back and we'll let you see it. If not, I'll let you know that as well. So keep watching on Digging History. I've got my hat here, folks. Don't want no ticks on my head. Got my water. Got everything we need. We're ready to go. I'm back on the trail of Morgan's Raiders. Okay? So, now, no one has really found a lot. You know from this but I hope to change it okay this is coming in on my knock the micro legend out of 23 now my experience so far has told me <coughs> that that is probably a shotgun shell so we gotta get bravo out of the way there uh, sometimes i like to go down here with the pinpointer okay so i kind of pinpointed where it was at i'm really suspicious i think it's a it's gonna be a shotgun shell but we'll just dig it and see okay so and, and it's not very deep, so I didn't sham it down in there. Here's the other thing, too, is I'm still learning this legend. And sometimes, you know, you get different signals. But yeah, that's a shotgun shell, probably from the early 1900s. So you're going to find stuff like that. And, uh, and, you know, we just carry it out of here. That's what we do, okay? And then, of course, you see, this is out in the middle of the woods, and Bravo wants to go in there and do his little thing. Uh, but we like to bury the hole. Very easy to rebury that hole. So check it out. Kick the dirt on. It's there. Now, as I told you, it's spring. Whew, lots of ticks are out right now, folks. So be sure that you are, you know, you are getting yourself... Um, prepared for this and you see this area right here hilly and I don't have a lot of time I've got about 30 minutes left and then I got to start heading back and there's uh, uh, and there's a reason for that I got a radio show that I do every Friday and uh, so and it starts at 4 o'clock so I'm going to try to get some digging in later as well uh, but I think that my wife's got plans for me <laughs> and the kids. Um, so I had to sneak down here and get in a little bit of digging. So the Legend is a little different machine. Okay, so here we go, the second dig here. And again, it's coming in. So it's coming in 25, 23, probably another shotgun shell, but I don't know. We don't know, so we have to dig it and figure it out. And, oh, there it is, right there. Popped right out of the ground, see it? So, there it is. The most common find you'll find in Appalachia is this wonderful shotgun shell. Now, I really appreciate the people. That, and there's Bravo. He's got to do his thing. You know, move the shovel. <laughs> uh, he is hilarious. So, anyway, come on, Bravo. Out, out. No more digging. So, he got in the water. So, he's smart, you know. He knows how to stay cool. And so, we came on this really cool rock formation. And a lot of water around it. So, of course, Mr. Bravo, as you can see, he took a bath. He's eating a little grass now. That's a sign that dogs are generally not feeling well. Uh, but 
in his case, I think um, that he is uh, a little bit upset stomach because I gave him his uh, heartworm and his uh, flea and tick protection pill today because that's very important. You know, you can't just spray bug spray on him. So, so Morgan's Raiders, they came through here in the Civil War, okay? So let me get back to what I'm doing. And uh, it has been really hard to find a lot of artifacts, you know. You know, the Confederates didn't have a lot at that time. So mainly what I find are like three ring bullets, uh, horseshoes, you know, things like that. But out here, where I really thought we would find, you know, evidence of this battle, <sighs> we're striking out. So anyways, keep watching on Digging History, folks, and, uh, and remember to like and subscribe and say hi to Bravo when you can. That's always a good thing. And you can say hi to me as well, me and my buddy. Okay, folks, we're back deep in the woods again. I'm gonna take my hat off so you can see my face. Bravo's fired up. This is our second hunt today. So we've already walked about, about three miles. There he is. He wants to climb up this rock and look at you. We found a really cool Civil War button. Uh, Ohio State Militia button. And I found two wheat pennies and that's been, the, that's been it, you know, what we found. So, you know, we're trying to find Morgan's uh, raider's trail now i go back here i found a three ring bullet 69 caliber one time uh, a few weeks ago uh, which would match the state militia uh bullets that they they had here now it could have been fired after the war hunting or uh you know a restless um uh, uh sentry fired around maybe who knows but um we're we have not found the actual five mile long uh, gauntlet that the uh, Morgan's Raiders ran through. Uh, so, you know, it's a lot of private property around here. So getting permission is tough. Uh, so we, we hunt on the public property that we can, then we get permission on property that we can. Um, and, and I'll tell you, it's, you know, we found a few bullets, but it's still not found the actual route because if we find it we'll find bullets everywhere so i'm sure that there's still a bunch of bullets up there so maybe back here we'll see all right keep watching on digging history we do find some cool stuff okay folks uh james mccormick here with digging history we're out here in racine ohio which is the site of the first invasion uh of the confederacy into ohio in the civil war September 5th, 1862. Now, we're in a field here down by the river and Racine is that way. Now, the Confederates came in from the opposite side of town. So this would make sense because the home guard fled that probably fled back this way, probably hid up in the hills there as well as down along the riverbanks because this place was really, really wooded back in the day. So we've got uh, Scott with us today, Scott Oliver. Okay, and then we've got Chuck Ewing right here, who is a, uh, he is a retired riverboat captain. Now, did you work on the river as well? Uh, I was a carpenter. He's a carpenter. And, uh, and you know, uh, Chuck was also in the Army, which I just found that out today. I had no idea he's in the Army, Chuck. <laughs> so, so anyway, so here we are out here on Digging History, and uh, hopefully we'll find something. We've got Bravo, he's back here in the weeds someplace looking for something, uh, trying to look for something to eat most likely, and uh, hopefully we'll find something. So uh, wish us luck.
Remember, you can't find anything sitting on the couch. Let's get up and get to digging. Okay, folks, first signal out here in uh, Racine, Ohio. It's a little bouncy, but it's going between a 96 and an 89. Uh, that could either be really big, old iron. Uh, that could be junk. You know, it could be a lot of different things, but, uh, you know, hey, we're going to find out. Uh, there's a lot of gunships and stuff that, that navigated this area, so it could be part of a cannonball or uh, who knows. Oh, there it is right there, and it is neither. And so, you know, then you know there's been some field dirt down here. So this looks like a, a top off of a probably um, can of grease. So I'll fill my hole in, check it one more time, and then we'll get back to digging. Okay, folks, we're gonna see what we found here. Uh, uh, I have no idea what it is. Could be a bullet, could be junk. Sure have found the book the junk today. We found some bullets though. Bravo's been good to have around. Whew. Hey, hey, looky there. Ha <laughs> ha! It's a bullet. Bravo. It's a three-ring bullet. Smell it. That's what we're looking for. Bravo. We found a bullet, man. All right, that's cool. So cool. I found a couple of Sharps bullets, too, and another free ringer that was shot. That was a nice one, though. <sighs> found this place. It's in the middle of the woods, you know. On some private property. Now, there was always suspect that there were bunkers and, uh, but if you look at the map, it almost looks like roads. But uh, it's, these are definitely trench lines. <sighs> good, good, good. All right, good find, buddy. Good find. Can't find it sitting on the couch, can we, Bravo? Whew. Man, we've been walking today. We got about 30 more minutes and it's gonna be dark. So we're gonna really hit this hard and we gotta get out of here. So it's like 4.30. So, you know, it gets dark in the woods by around five o'clock. So, need to be heading out by then. That's your safety advice from Bravo, <laughs> the digging dog. <laughs> Let's go, people. Let's go find some more stuff. Okay, well, we didn't do too good today, did we, Bravo? Come on. But, uh, but Bravo got to get some more work in the woods. And uh, he stays with me really, really good. Aren't you, buddy? We didn't find a lot of stuff, but you sure were a good boy. Yeah, you're a very good boy. I know, I love you too, man. And uh, so we got to do some digging. Found a, a penny and a bunch of shotgun shells and you know stuff like that. Uh, so he's doing good. Uh, you know, he doesn't get spooked out in the woods and uh, seems to be, oh, every now and then he'll want to get in there and try to play with the, the detector while it's swinging, but that's very rare. Now, today I had a, a smaller white coil on and he just went after that thing. <laughs> so I've got to get him trained, you know, not to do that. Um, but he walks right beside of me or a few steps behind of me or sometimes he comes in front of me but he's never out of my sight and uh, so he's a very good dog he's uh, you know he's doing his job get that right buddy and we have good conversations out here Bravo and I do <laughs> so you know, nobody thinks I'm out here just talking to myself now. 
when I'm talking to the camera. <laughs> uh, hey, you gotta have fun, right? So I'm still a little bit worried about snakes, uh, but it is starting to get dark. So we're getting out of the woods. Um, we're trying to get legislation passed that will uh, uh, authorize metal detecting in state parks and areas like that with a license, with a license. You know, I don't mind paying a hundred dollar a year license fee, you know, if I have to, in order to get access to some of these really cool places. That's what we're doing out here. So Bravo's looking around, he sees something. So we're getting out of the woods now. Have a good day, folks. God bless. Hey, and welcome back here, folks. I hope you enjoyed that footage from the field. We found some pretty cool artifacts and we found some not so cool things, but you know what? That's all part of the fun. We get out, we move around, we navigate in these beautiful West Virginia uh, woods, and sometimes we find some really cool pieces of history. Remember what I said about being prepared. You know, there is a motto in the Boy Scouts that says, be prepared, folks, and you should always be prepared. Take your water, take your food, pack a backpack, and let somebody know where you're at because safety is the number one thing. Because at the end of each digging adventure, you know what the greatest treasure is? is you coming home to be back with your family. And that's what we want you to do. Hey folks, if you get a chance, please like, share, and subscribe. And remember to thank the wonderful folks at the West Virginia Library Television Network here for the work that they're doing. Look, it's all volunteer work. When you watch these shows, understand that we are not paid people. We are here because we want to bring you something really cool. And, and just like the libraries across West Virginia, it's a great place to go to throw yourself into a good book or study or look at the resources that are available in each and every library that our counties have. Don't let those great, great, wonderful places go to waste. Take your family to the library and enjoy a day out reading. Remember, we also say that a day out digging, folks, beats a day on the couch anytime. So get up, get a metal detector, and go out in the woods and enjoy life. Do a little metal detecting and let us know what you find on digging history. If you need any help, you need any advice, you know you can reach out to me anytime. Uh, you, can, you can reach out to me on email, on our Facebook, or you can just comment on the YouTube channel that we have. Uh, we would love to be able to answer any questions that you have and help your events to be enjoyable ones. Get your family together, go metal detecting, hit the woods, enjoy life, and folks, have a great and wonderful day. Thank you for watching the 24th episode of Digging History.